Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I'm your host, Pretorius. This is part 14 of the 1743 live stream from uh, a couple days ago, I think. By Owen, still a wolf, <laughs> still a wolf in sheep's clothing, Benjamin. You're going to make a claim that you're standing on a spinning ball. Show me the curve and show me motion. Mickelson Morley, right? Einstein couldn't disprove it. There's no motion of the earth. You can't show any motion and you can't show any curve. It's on you. You want to make the claim. The claim that the earth is a non-moving flat plane is not the crazy claim, despite what your programming tells you. Look outside. Look at the foot. Just look around. Okay. The claim that we're spinning on a ball trapped in a gravitational. No matter how entertaining this conversation is, you must remember, I would, you don't, you don't must. You should. I would encourage you to remember how this whole thing started. Say, uh, everybody just woke up tomorrow and the aliens were here and they were like, yeah, actually they were, we're all here from the same planet and blah, blah, blah. And the only way to get through the dome is through this technology. Uh, the earth is flat, but yeah, you just don't have any idea how the other worlds are. Say that happened. Who would take all the credit? <laughs> Owen Benjamin would. If you're not looking at the screen, look at the screen. around the sun in a vacuum despite having a pressurized atmosphere is the crazy claim now it could be true prove it oh, everyone's proved it since like 3000 bc with that fucking egypt really so tell me about galileo galileo galilee in the 1500s said that the earth was spinning and so he almost got killed by the catholic church oh that's interesting i thought everyone proved 300 bc that the earth was a globe so the catholic that everybody proved 300 bc before christ What? Is that is that the timeline? Is that what is that really how that went down? Because there's what four hundred years of silence between the last book of the Old Testament and uh, A.D. If I'm not mistaken, and so during the four hundred years of silence is whenever people proved that the Earth was round. I didn't know that. Church for fifteen hundred years believed it was a flat, not moving plane. So I'm guessing that means Jesus and the apostles and all the prophets. So why would the Catholic church think it was a flat, not moving plane in the 16th century and, and kill poor Galileo when it was just so obvious and everyone all knew it. And now Jesus. So when Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 and everyone said he was going to fall off the goddamn edge, I thought that everybody had already known for 1800 years because of the experiment that they did in Alexandria. Uh, uh, you, sir, you ate a pot brownie from Joey Diaz and then you ran it. It's like, shut the fuck up. It's so convoluted. There's, it's, I know it's sped up. I know, and that's not fair. How fast is it going? It is. Let's slow it down just a little bit. Dude, well, then, then show me. Okay, compare like the number. Somebody's like, well, then how come the stars are so easily mad? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll read that one to you. Just have a good argument. Someone said, is that like how no flat earthers ever have an argument to predict the movement of the stars and none of it makes any sense on a flat model? But the globe earth model can do it absolutely perfectly and has for centuries. Okay, what I'm about to say is a fact. Tycho Brahe, who made the most comprehensive and predictive map for the first time in human history, well, in Western history, he was Dutch, believed we were on a flat, not moving plane. But what do I know? I mean, he's no steal to bike Tyson. Tycho Brahe was the guy that everyone stole from. Like Kepler and those guys. Tycho Brahe was the guy that... Oh, so in his hit, I've never heard of this guy. I don't know how famous he is. But if you notice the people that he does uh, tend to give credit to and, and kind of praise, he, he speaks about them the same way he speaks about himself. Everybody steals from... Everybody stole from him. Everybody steals from him. All the work about the movement of the stars, okay? And he and he was a flat Earth. That's why you don't know his name. Kepler and all those guys. Galileo. I don't even know if Galileo existed. It sounds like bullshit to me. Galileo Galilee it sounds like a porn name. Um, Everything's perverted to him. And it's like, yeah. And someone said, "There's no way we wouldn't feel the motion at that speed." Yeah, but they would say it's so slow you can't possibly feel it. No, you can measure everything, and it's sixty-six thousand miles an hour. For the, uh, revol the revolution around the, the sun, it's in an ellipse. And if you don't know how mind-blowing that is when I say ellipse, then you haven't even fucking thought about it. That means it changes speeds. 
in a one year. So you're in a fixed position. This is why you can nail them to the wall with this shit. One year ellipse, that means it has to be measurable. With evolution and the Big Bang, they just keep adding years. It was 14.7 billion years literally three months ago, and now it's 27 billion years. They do it with evolution all the time. You know, the Earth was 10 million years ago, like 200, 100 years ago. And now it's 4.1 billion years old because they just keep adding years. I, I just don't. I want to skip ahead. I do, but I, I'm not going to. Because their shit doesn't make any sense. When you're dealing with an ellipse, that means it changes speeds. Speed, not just direction. Speed. In a one-year fixed time frame at 66,000 miles an hour, you would absolutely be able to uh, measure that. A there are just so many other people to listen to. If, if this is what intrigues you, if this is one of the reasons why you're sticking around listening to Owen, there are so many other people, so many other people that you can listen to besides this guy. But I guess the whole Hollywood allure used to be engaged to Christina Ricci, used to be in movies, used, was on TV. But I mean, come on. And that's the irony of this whole thing. He says that he's out of Hollywood and there's so many ritualistic behaviors from Hollywood in Hollywood. And he still does that. The humiliation rituals that people talk about, that's what pan the gay away is. That's what calling him Big Bear is an, as an adult. You're calling him daddy. He might claim to not be in Hollywood, but he still does the Luciferian ritualistic humiliation, all of that kind of stuff. And on a side note, if you do hear my wife snoring, she's perfectly all right with uh, with it being on audio. I'm sorry that if it's distracting or whatever, um, she does ask me to be in here. Uh, she says that my voice is comforting. Uh, it is what it is. I apologize if it's distracting, though. Speed change at that rate. Doesn't even matter if it's gradual. Of course you can. It's just so mind-blowingly fucking stupid. And momentum, momentum, like oh, well, gravity, gravity. No, no, no. If the entire Earth, if the entire Earth is going in an ellipse. Boom, boom, boom. Ellipse, guys, ellipse. And if you haven't thought about what ellipse means, you haven't even thought about it. It's in an ellipse around the sun. It's sixty-six thousand miles an hour in a fixed one-year period. That should give you excitement to think about, not anger. If you feel anger, you're in a cult. Like you're the one in the goddamn cult, not me. You know. All right, moving on. He is in a cult. <laughs> he is the cult leader. That's why he's called Big Bear and everybody else has other names. <coughs> Excuse me. His his actual bear name is Big. Just like Coddington's name, bear name is Coddington. So you're calling him Big. Which means he's big, you're small. He's top, you're bottom. And it's bears. Whenever he talked about Owen, uh, whenever he talked about Crowder, Stephen Crowder, he would say that Stephen was alpha over him and he loved it. That he had the crown. He wore the crown. It's all predatorial behavior. And it's there's so many sexual innuendos and and just humiliation, ritualistic behavior, predatorial behavior. Radius. Yeah, because high level scientists have shown this stuff. And that's one reason why you see the, the bobbleheads change stuff. Like when uh, when uh, Steel by Tyson said we're on an oblate spheroid, like a pear, it's not really a ball, even though growing up, I was told it was a perfect ball. Why did they say that? Because you can prove eight inches per mile squared is horseshit. That on a ball with a 25,000 mile circumference, you can calculate exactly what um, the curve would be now. Then he's also said, I've heard Steve, Steve, uh, Tyson say that it is uh, smoother than a cue ball as well. Eight inches per mile squared is a parabola, not a circle, but fundamentally, that's what you would be measuring on the surface. That's the curve. That's the calculus of it. Okay, so um, when it doesn't line up, what do they say? They go, oh, well, it's, it's different curves at different places in the, in, the, uh, in the earth. You're like, oh, you're a liar. You're literally, a li if I was a cop, you're going to jail. <laughs> Codsworth said, I asked one of my friends who's pretty intelligent, works hard academically, uh, that, and I can see him kind of coping with maybe it's gradual, but even he knows, one, that would be measurable, and two, the swap from Excel to decel, we'd feel Right, especially at that speed. Now, if you're going 100 miles an hour, or if you're going one mile an hour, and there was a one, you know, there was a speed change over the course of a year to 99 miles an hour, you could argue that you couldn't measure that. It's 66,000 miles an hour with the... I'm going to pause this and see what he named this, because I don't think that he... Uh, I think this is just him 
reminding everybody why there's a possibility why they should still be listening to him. I don't remember this being in the title of this. Yeah, no, it's it's I want my skull, the honor, the honor culture of creativity and hilarious anger by Big Bear, some crazy. The ellipse, you absolutely can measure that. It's not an infinite amount of time. It's measurable and there is no measurement of that. Of course, it's bullshit, guys. When you're on a hot air balloon or you're on a uh, plane, the spin of the earth has nothing. I've seen videos. I was watching uh, the bear cave the other day, which that's kind of funny that there's is that <laughs> they call theirs the bear cave. Um, but uh, uh, they were talking about hot air balloons. And uh, what was it? The bear cave? I think it was. I'm not too sure, but they were talking about uh, hot air balloons and watching them land and stuff. And it's crazy that people do that as le- as a leisurely be as as like a, a thing that you want to do. It. I mean, the stories that you hear, yo, I want a hot air balloon ride, and you just they describe it, and it's just and you see it, and it, it's just crazy that people do that for fun. I do with your travel time? Does that not tell you anything? That's ridiculous. Okay. Oh, well, everything's moving exactly the same. Okay, prove it to me then. You prove to me that shit. And we've already shown that NASA lies, lies, lies. They're not saying anything true. Once you start uh, going through the moon landing, everything starts falling apart. You're like... It's very similar to going through Owen Benjamin's live streams and just picking them apart. If, if what he's saying about uh, NASA is true, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I have my own personal opinions. Maybe one of these days I'll do videos on that. But the more important thing right now is Owen Benjamin and him being a dangerous cult leader, a dangerous predatorial cult leader, somebody who presents uh, bait and switches all of the time. He just recently did it in this. He has billed the Metaria Festival as a, the return of the greatest comedian that has ever existed, doing something that no other comedian has ever done. And he he just doesn't care that it's a bait and switch. Four hundred dollars for one ticket, five a thousand dollars for two tickets. What? Like, so you fake the the, the largest because the moon landing is faked, okay? So the largest accomplishment in human history is fake. And so then, like, when oh, how many people have to be in on it? It doesn't matter. That's fake. That was a fake event. The nuclear bomb videos they're showing you are fake. That doesn't mean places aren't bombed. It doesn't mean war doesn't exist. It doesn't mean people don't exist. There's no fallout radiation in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. There never was. And their entire evidence is burnt shadows on a wall. I could do that with some coal. I could just fucking do that on a wall. It's not evidence. That's ridiculous. That's It's a set design. That's Hollywood. Tyson even says, not even a sphere. It's an oblique spheroid, which makes traveling even crazier for airplanes impossible. Right. You'd have to fly over a seven-foot wall of water. It's so stupid, dude. Dear own long-time listener, Ozark's donor, first-time writer, first of all. That was a stupid... <clears throat> statement what he just said whatever side of the fence you're on with this or you could be riding the fence he said you would fly over a seven foot wall is that what he said which makes traveling even crazier for airplanes impossible right you'd have to tr- fly over a seven foot wall of water it's so stupid to- fly over a seven foot wall of water he claims to be six foot eight which is only four inches shorter than seven feet you would have to claim to fly over that's I know that's a cra- that's a, a strange thing to uh, hold on to, but no matter what side of the venture on, that was a stupid statement. Good. Dear own longtime listener, Ozark's donor, first time writer. First of all, thank you for your work. I first saw you back in 2017 on Alex Jones, and have been listening ever since. It's been quite a ride. I greatly appreciate your fearlessness and speaking what you believe to be true. And I admire your dedication and actively pursuing a lifestyle which conf- conforms to your beliefs. Thank you. Yeah, you are what you do, right? You are what you do, right? So you are a liar. You are a thief. You are a manipulator. You are a predator. Um, I'm starting to believe that these people that claim to have been listening since 2017 are lying and that they've just gone back and watched some of them. Because to to say that you've watched him from 2017 to, to now straight through and still stick with him is kind of a bizarre thing to say. I must especially thank you for introducing me to Vox Day. It has been a great joy to read and listen to him and be part of supporting Castalia and the Junior Classics campaign. Yeah, Vox the doer. It's always why I've respected him. I'm down in Australia at the moment, although born in Canada of Dutch descent, so I will not be there for the festival, but I pray for a blessing on the time you have together. May it be a great encouragement for all. Onward. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for the donation. I thought to offer a few thoughts on the disaster, which is the current Christian church at the moment. 
I may or may not read this. I'm gonna I'll pull the plug if it gets I don't feel like fighting with anybody, but I'm really enjoying what you're writing. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the Puritans. Yeah, I like the Puritans. Quakers at all, but I, yeah, they're like they're like muzzies. <laughs> Yeah, they fucking had no tolerance for all the bullshit. Jonah Bear's gay, says Fort Bear. My niggle, says Gagan, is so powerful. I'm getting normie friends texting me thinking my Instagram was hacked since my niggle memes looked like a grift to them. Why would it look like a grift? Denmark Bear firing up his version of niggle right now. Wow, what's Denmark Bear doing? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm like trash, but I play guitar like I'm black. Nice, Gagan. All right, moving on. Uh... It's fascinating to see how books from even 150 years ago speak about the rampant passivity and tolerance of sin within Christian circles. To quote R.C. Ryle, a scriptural view of sin will prove an admirable antidote to the low views of personal holiness, which are so painful, prevalent in these last days of the church, written in 1877. Wow, that's powerful. I did not realize that. Nothing, there's... Wow, that's powerful. Didn't realize that. This is the uh, Texas Goat Radio Show, and I'm your host, Matorius. As always, till next time, keep saying no to Owen Benjamin. Cares Troy Smith, the 47th.